Let's roll. Sex this marriages. <laughs> he say, she say, uh, interviewee segment, take one. intimacy and relationship coach and sex educator. She is gaining her reputation for being the sex architect. She created Velvet Lips LLC to empower people of all ages to embrace, educate, and enjoy their sexuality and their sexual lives. She has studied human sexuality for more than 16 years at San Francisco State um, University and Georgia State University, respectively, and has expert knowledge in a wide variety of subjects. So let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us today. So you were sitting in the audience as we were going over our panel discussion. Mm -hmm. So what did you think about that? <laughs> there are a lot of things I was thinking about. <laughs> um, one of them really is around communication. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm um, just thinking about, you know, he say, she say, um, a lot of times when we communicate, we all say, oh, it's all about communication. It's all about communication. But what I've learned over the years is, Yes, it's all about communication, but it's really how we communicate. And so that's why I think about like learning styles. You know, are we audio people? Are we visual people? Are we touching people? How do we communicate that way? And how does that make us better people um, for our partners? And then um, I was also thinking about how women, um, just generally feminine folks, talk, communicate differently than more masculine or male energy folks, right? So, um, <laughs> so um, a lot of times, um, I, with men especially, they're very direct, right? Um, with women, they do this, uh, I call it, a, it, like you have to decode, right? <laughs> um, a lot of times women will start to uh, uh, say things like, um, let's do an old-fashioned example, right? Does my butt look big in these jeans, right? Yeah. And it's like, what are you trying to get me to say, right? right? <laughs> so that's, that's basically trying to uh, reinterpret things. So um, what I do a lot with couples is you know, think about, break down the communication, think about how to seduce your partners more, um, thinking about um, the ways that we can just better our sex lives in general. So That's a great thing. You said how to seduce your partners more. What are some ways to seduce your partners, get them back, get drawn them back in? Oh, so it really um, depends, like I said, on your learning style. So a lot of what I teach is um, based on um, uh, how you learn, right? So if you're an audio person, like, how would you know if, uh, I can ask, can I ask the panel here? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. great. So um, how do you think you would be able to seduce someone who learns um, by hearing? Okay. Talking yes. nasty. Hey, mama, <laughs> <laughs> so that's really great. How you talk to them, right? right. So whispering to them, maybe having it like a soft, seduct you know, seductive voice. What else? Or some people are just intellectually turned on. If you're able to meet them where they are mentally, that will get someone very aroused. Yes, right. but what if they're audio? How intellectually? How would that fit into somebody who is audio? Uh, well, then you would probably. Maybe use music. Mu music on well, music, yes. And what else? I don't know. How do you, you, like, yeah. you say things? Maybe like say a... big words. Ooh. Ah, yes. Huge. Yeah. Words that, that other people don't yeah. know, right? Uh -huh. Using creative words, right? I like to call them three syllable or more words, right? <laughs> Audio people love to hear those things, right? Um, when you're thinking about someone who is visual, how do you think you would seduce them? Lingerie. Lingerie, look or at pretty, no clothes yes. at all. Naked. Yeah, well, <laughs> naked, yes, but also like a strip tease, yeah. right? Yeah. They are very visual, right? Pumps. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pumps. Erotic art. Yes, erotic art, definitely. Or maybe going to look at the erotic art together. Yes. Yeah. What about when you talk to them? How do you talk to them? 
Through Skype, if they're a visual person? Yes, you can talk to them, yes, visually. You could do webcam, right? What else? Do we have to lift, like, do certain things with your lips mm -hmm. to draw attention to them? Mm -hmm. So with, with visual people, they like to see the opposite of what's going on in the room, right? So if someone walked in here right now, the visual person would be like, Woof, right? Mm -hmm. They need to see the opposite of what's happening in the room. So if it's a busy room and you're moving slowly, you're going to get that person's attention, mm -hmm. right? When you talk to them, you need to be creative, right, with your imagination. So describing every single part of a story usually will get visual people. And you have to help them create something in their imagination, mm -hmm. right? I like that. Sexting, things like that, things that they can see, mm -hmm. sexy pictures, right? Mm -hmm. So what about um, touch? How do we seduce those people? Massage. Yes, definitely massage. A hand drop. <laughs> I think anybody would like that. <laughs> yeah, <of course. laughs> Did you have something? No, I don't actually. Oh, okay. I'm thinking about really like textures, right? People who love to touch like different textures. Do you mind if I touch you? Okay, so like, you know, people who are touch, they just love to touch, right? So they like to see, feel different textures, different things. So I think having like, how you have fishnets, right, in your right. silk, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great way to have, combine different kinds of textures. The people who like to touch really love those things. I think my husband is a texture person. Oh, yeah? Yeah. He nice. asked you how your eyebrows look. So I think he's a little bit visual, too. Yeah, and we can be a combination of both, for sure. So how would you say, how would you know what your partner is? Do you need to pay attention, or is there a test you can do? Or? Yes. Um, well, I have a test on my website that's usually, you know, pretty easy that you can do. It's like a little quiz. Um, and um, also, um, just really paying attention. If I'm, you know, talking to you, and I'm like... You know, Melanie, 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 <laughs> Melanie, and you don't answer? I'm not audio. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> exactly. So if you were a touch person, I'd be like, Melanie, can you go do this for me? Right. right? And then you would pay attention, right? right? So it's really about trying to see who, where, what are they doing and how they're paying attention. Wow. Yeah. So you would definitely have to study your partner. Yeah, or take the quiz. Yeah. <laughs> like the social media people just say. Yeah. I read a. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I read a book. I want to say that it's by Stephen Covey about the uh, five love languages. Yes. Oh, that's how huge is that um, when it comes to intimacy and and sexuality in marriages? I think that's a. Yes, I think that's huge, and that's actually a part of one of my workshops, right? It's thinking about not only our seduction learning approach, but also thinking about our love language, right? And combining those two. So um, I brought these for you all in your audience today. Awesome. So these are um, little sheets, um, erotic activity sheets that I have. And, you know, it's nice if you and your partner fill it out and then trade and then... There's um, some nasty stuff on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I'm going to hand those to them. Okay, is it possible to get those to the audience? Excellent. Thank you. Can I ask you a question? All the questions. Yeah. Do you have couples who like want to um, live out rape scenes, and that's what change, uh, turns yeah. them on? Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot, like yes. TV yeah. yeah. Definitely. And like I told y'all earlier, when you approach sexuality, you have to keep an open mind. Yes. Right. I'm just going to be honest with you because there's different types of people out there. Yes, definitely. And there's a, actually a really great couple that was going, coming to Atlanta. Um, I love them a lot. Um, has, uh, King Noir and Jet Setting Jasmine. And they're actually going to be teaching a workshop on um, taboos and how we can make those taboos sexy. How people think like, ooh, no, that's gross. You know, and making it really sexy and seductive because they're a really sexy couple. Right? Um, My question is about blood play. What is that? Exactly? Okay. Um, blood play is literally what it sounds like, just anything that have to do with blood. So maybe um, you're into a partner that, you know, maybe you're into somebody going down on you while you're menstruating, uh, right? Or maybe you're into cutting, nope. you know, or, <laughs> or maybe it's literally just what it sounds like. You know, anything, that has to, anything that has to do with blood. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, okay, so I got one. Oh, uh, no, it, 
Go ahead. Did you have another question about the sheath? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. What What is a breath control? Breath control is when you actually are controlling someone's breathing, right? So, um, no, that's different. Okay. Yeah, so this is literally like maybe I'm smothering you with a pillow and you can't breathe and I'm only allowing you to. Wow. Can I get the hands of y'all who do that? <laughs> it is crickets. <laughs> I'm serious. It's, everything is not for everybody, right. you know, and so that's perfectly okay. Um, these are a lot, a lot of these things are very kinky. Um, I think that's whole words, like pineapple. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I'm turning the blue. I yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, hopefully you use your safe words. Yes, yes. 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 I have a question. Yes. Um, now, I'm hoping this is what I think it is, but I'm going to read something else. Um, double penetration, does that just mean something in the vagina and then something in the butt or like two? Just two holes. No, no, just two holes being filled. So, right? So maybe your mouth and your vagina oh, or maybe okay, your okay. mouth and anus or anus and vagina. Okay. Um, just two holes being filled. I thought yeah, you mean. That's not that bad. But <laughs> and that so, doesn't always have to mean more than one person, because that could be a, a sex toy and a person. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. That's, like, not bad. But, um, so, I think one of the SMM versus, like, eroticism. Um, so those are two different things. Um, so uh, eroticism more has to do with fantasy and emotional attachment, whereas S and M it has to do with kink, uh, you know, bondage, discipline, sadism, masochism, um, you know, domination, uh, domination, submission. So uh, thinking about so those are sort of two different things. Okay. So the, they can be combined, so, so like Fifty Shades of Grey or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So you can combine sort of the emotional attach attachment of eroticism with S and M, but we have to make sure those are two different distinct things because we can look at erotic literature and see it as eroticism. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, cooking. It's just what it sounds like. What was Making it? a meal. Making a meal while you're having sex. Oh, no, no, no. It's, these are erotic activities. Okay, you know, okay. These, so, aren't, yeah, these aren't necessarily all about yes. having sex. It's what leads oh, you to sex. So you. if somebody okay. likes to be cooked for you know, maybe you do it in uh, oh. only an apron. Yeah, maybe you, you know, like maybe something erotic nice. about cooking. Maybe you're cooking like aphrodisiacs. Yeah. Like you know. I do. <laughs> so, Marla, could you uh, give me a story about someone um, doing consensual humiliation? Like, what does that look like? Um, consensual humiliation really is about um, when you have two people who are um, in a in a negotiating a sex scene. Um, so it's like, okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, I am going to um, uh, take you to the mall, and I'm going to have you on a leash. And when I tell you to kneel down and bark, you know, this, and that's how you feel humiliated, you know, maybe in a public scene, then that's what I'm going to do for you to help fulfill your sexual desire. Uh, is that legal? <laughs> yes, yeah, so I mean, far. They, they, they <laughs> I mean, going in, in a public place is it, fine. I'm not having sex. I wouldn't say sex in a public place is, is illegal, yes. Well, if you signed up for it, it's consensual. Right. right. I mean, but I would probably get it right in writing. I needed to sign this way. Yes. Right. <laughs> one thing I might yes, there's definitely like sex contracts and things like that that people uh, do through, you know, BDSM. Um, that, you know, through so their, these are all interesting. So, um, if you were, let's say, with a married couple, what would be a, a small way to start getting the intimacy back before they get to some of these levels? Right. A small <laughs> just, just level okay. So this is, I give these to you all so it could help sort of propel you, right? Right. right. Okay. So this is, and this is why I want to go back to the love languages and the communication because yeah. this all fits in, right? So pick one of these for me. Knife play. We want to try? Knife play. Knife play. Knife play. We want to try or sure. we've already tried? No, it doesn't. Knife play. 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 Knife Okay, Sorry. golden shower. All right, people are familiar with golden showers. Golden showers is when you golden showers when you pee on a person, yeah. right? Okay. So, all right, that's that, that's pretty easy but taboo, right? Right. Okay. So, um, say what, okay. So, what kind of person are you? And then just just like off. if we just pick visual, audio, or tactile, let's pick one. I am a da, 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 probably a visual person. Okay, so you're visual. Okay, and do you know your love language? 
What are they again? Um, so, so there's acts of service, quality time, um, words uh, of affirmation, yeah, words of affirmation, physical touch, and gifts. yeah, gifts. I'm quality time gifts. Up, and up, and up. <laughs> we we got to make this simple. <laughs> Time. Quality time, great. Okay, so well, so thinking about quality time, thinking about how you're a vision person, and thinking about pee play or golden showers, right? What you would do is maybe set up a sex date or have someone, maybe your partner or someone you're interested in, situationship. Oh, that's another thing too. What y'all are talking about is complicated. I call them situationships they are. or flirtationships. Yes. So we can talk about that a little later. Yes. But to go back around communication, so. Um, so what a partner could do for you mm-hmm. could be like, okay, um, they may send you a, a sex, right? And they say, hey, I'm thinking about this tonight, and it's yellow water drops or something, mm-hmm. right? And you're kind of like, what is, okay, wait. <laughs> and they, and they, know, they know, already know you have this fantasy, right? right? <laughs> so they send you that, like, I've been thinking about you lately, right? right? And so then they set up... <laughs> I'm my bladder for you, yes. I've been drinking a lot of water today. No asparagus. And what they can do is like sit, set up a sex day, or they can say, like, tonight I am ready for you. I've been preparing my body all day for you. And so what they do is maybe they, you know, they say, I can't wait till you get home. I'm going to have everything set up for you. And so when you walk in the door, everything smells nice, everything's wonderful, they run you a, a hot bath, mm-hmm. and you know, there's rose petals, candles, you know, there's some you know, chocolate covered strawberries, mm-hmm. some champagne waiting for you. And then they slowly, you know, take off your clothes one piece at a time, you know, lead you into the tub, and then say, you know, hey, I've been waiting for this moment all day. You know, are you ready for me? Right. You know, mm-hmm. and then you know, then you know they let loose, and <laughs> you know, and then you have your fantasy of just like, oh, this is amazing. Right. You know, I'm already in the tub, so it's okay. Yeah. Okay. That's not putting in the tub. <laughs> trying to make it a little bit easier. <laughs> I was trying to make it easy for you. Um, so romantic. Right. So. Yeah. And when she said right. like that, yeah. It didn't sound so harsh, like, 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 yeah. like, 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 you know, and then you leave and just don't say anything about it. You know, or maybe you do something that so, sort of sets someone up for yeah. that. Awesome. Yeah. So did y'all have any other questions for them before we go? Yeah. I have a question. So mm-hmm. if you're good at setting set sex scenes, do you think that will help prevent a sexless marriage? Definitely, right? And I think, you know, that's why I have, there's so many things on this erotic activity sheet, and not to say you can't create your own, um, but it's nice to just be like, okay, I'm just going to pick like one of these, and then, you know, if my partner's open to it, and that's why I usually have partners trade, so they say, I ain't doing that, I know, I can do that, I can see what you right. like, and right. I can do that, and, you know, okay. you know, navigate it that way, but I think um, it, this is sort of definitely, I feel like, an advantage for people. Okay can be an advantage. I do have a question Mm -hmm. and this is kind of a personal one for me. Mm -hmm. What can or what advice do you give to women who does have a lower libido? Oh so I think there's a there's different foods you can eat to help um, with your testosterone levels. Um, I think there's uh, not I think but there are foods you can eat to boost testosterone levels. I think getting out and exercising more Mm -hmm. um, helping you to feel better about your body. Mm -hmm. I think uh, being stress a little you know more stress free so I think if your partner helps you with different activities, that, that a lot of times women we work inside and outside the home, <laughs> and so you know, I, you know, I found myself, you know, working forty hours a week, coming home, making dinner, you know, doing this. If you have kids, then you have to, you know, do the homework, put them to bed, doing all these things, and that can create stress. Now, if you're, we've learned, and in, in research, we've learned that if your partner helps you out, you will have more sex, and you will be less stressed 
and you will have a better life in general. So what you saying is men should help out? Like when yes. <laughs> yes, be more mindful. Be more mindful and helpful. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Mm -hmm. What if you just don't like having sex with your partner? And you really just, like, while you're having sex with them, you're thinking about that other partner you had. How can you get over that? So, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, and there, that sounds like there needs some therapy to get involved. <laughs> well, I mean, well, yeah, closure, closure, but also, no, 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 because we, you know, there's people in our lives where we've had like really great and awesome sex, and then we come back and we're like, we're having sex with someone, we're like, man, I don't remember that one time I was right. having a really great sex. And, you know, we all do that, but if you're in that moment, and if you find yourself in that moment, I would say take yourself out of that moment, because I think sexual chemistry is almost everything. We've learned in studies that um, better sex, as women who have better sex, have better life, like better relationships, mm -hmm. which also lead to better sex, mm -hmm. which also leads to better relationships, right? Mm -hmm. It's this constant cycle. Yes, it okay. is. Question, you, did you want to go first, Jamie? Uh, yeah, let me get this one in. Yes, <laughs> um, so somebody with this sheet, uh, especially that's somebody that's in a sexless marriage, mm -hmm. they can easily look at this sheet and say, oh, so if I start just doing these things and I don't have a sex, sexless marriage anymore, but it goes deeper than that, right? This is just a oh. component. Yes, this is just a component. Like, say, so I, sometimes I have couples who ha everything is grand, but their sex, they're, they're just not into the sex, right? So this can help them, like, s simply. However, I've had couples who are like, we think we're, it's just the sex is bad. And the sex has been bad for 10 years, but, you know, I've been, you know, I've just been dealing with it. You know, I've had that happen, right? And, um... All I can say is it's deeper than that, right? It's really about communication, like I said, how your, you know, your love language and your learning, uh, your learning approach. Um, but really, communication, are they doing something that annoys you mm -hmm. that you can't get over? And this is why they're turning you off, right? Those, those things need to be addressed, which are usually addressed in premarital counseling. So what about someone who may have been sexually abused or has sexual trauma? Because mm. that has a lot to do with it sometimes, too, because sometimes men and women, because sometimes men are molested as boys and mm -hmm. things like that, too. And so when they grow up, they deal with a lot of, uh, you know, those images, those thoughts. And sometimes the opposite sex or that sex that did it to you may cause issues in your adulthood when it's time to be sexual. Mm -hmm. You know, so that will be what something that they would probably need to do individual counseling and then couples counseling together. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, doing therapy, um, and depending on what it is, it might need exposure therapy or different kinds of sex therapy, um, just depending on what, what the issue is. Um, I had a client that um, needed some exposure therapy because um, every time she would get in a room with a man, she would freak out, but she liked men, right? So it was kind of like, okay, well, how do you navigate this world? Like, first you need to do the work yourself and get that, get that work done. And then after you're, you're healed or healed enough where you think you can move on, then, you know, working with your partner to make sure they understand your needs, wants, desires, and that they're not pushing you back into that space. Okay, well, let's give Marla a round of applause. Woo!